What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over a Skag Turf Tiger. This is a 61 inch riding mower. This is the original one. So I was having an issue where it would not crank over. My buddy basically let me uh, use it for a bit. Obviously when we first got it started and everything and it turned over fine. And this thing has been left out, obviously as you can see in the elements, which is why it has some rust. But anyway, of course, I'm grateful he's letting me use it for a bit. I may end up actually buying it from him, but there is an issue, like I said, where it would not crank over. So basically there is a bunch of safety switches on here and I just wanna kind of show you what I did to bypass them, just so that if you have a similar issue where it will not crank, you could try this out to see what switch is actually bad. And of course there's other ways to do it where you could uh, check the continuity on the switches, but at least this way, with this thing that I use to test it out, if the switch does go bad while you're using this thing, you can use this little jumper cable thing that I made. So basically it's just a wire and with two little blades. And basically you'll unplug, let's just say this parking brake safety switch I know is 100% bad because when the motor was running, even if I had the switch all the way up, when I got off the seat, the motor ended up dying out like it's supposed to. So basically, if this is down like this, then okay, obviously you drive it like that. And if you need to stop and keep the motor running, you would put this back up, it would engage the switch and it will keep the motor going. But obviously that, like I said, this switch is 100% bad for sure. Now, one thing I did do was I'm gonna clean up these contacts and try plugging it in and see if it ends up fixing it. If not, then obviously we have to replace this switch. Like I said, I literally just have this little wire thing plugged into here, so it bypasses it. And like I said, I did this one, I did the two control arms, the seat had a new one in there, so I didn't have to worry about that, I knew that was good. And when I first did it, it did not crank over. I put in the start position onto the on, and I would try to crank it, nothing. I did end up going like this, and you hear that click. Then after that, I was able to get it to uh, turn over. But obviously I gotta hold the seat down to start. Just let me do that and then you'll hear a crank. See? So obviously that was pretty easy to diagnose it just by having these little things like that. And they're great to have because like I said, if you're in the middle of the morning on the lawn and uh, like I said, one of the safety switches go out, you shut it off and then you can't uh, start it back up. At least you can bypass it with one of these things. Very simply, just plug it in. So I have the parking brake switch plugged in. I have this control arm switch plugged in. Same with that one. And like I said, the seat safety switch, which is right under here, works just like that when you press it in. That's brand new, so I know that's not the issue. So first, I'm gonna, uh, like I said, I'm gonna clean up all these contacts just because maybe they had corrosion on them. I'll clean those up good, and then I'm gonna do one by one and see if the motor ends up turning over. If it cleans it up and it works, perfect. I don't gotta replace it. But of course, if it doesn't work, then I know the switch is bad. I'll just put the jumper back in, and then I'll order a new switch, swap it out, and I should be good to go. But yeah, guys, hopefully this video will be helpful for you. Basically, like I said, I got this thing. It starts every time now because I jumped it. So I just got to replace the switch. I'm going to test it with cleaning the contacts. If that doesn't work, get a new switch and you should be good to go. So a quick little update. I did end up sanding down the blades on the switches themselves. I plugged it back in and it works perfectly now. So I didn't even have to replace the switch. So that's, I guess, what happens. And when you leave mowers out in the yard, you know what I mean? Basically, they can get corroded. So you just gotta clean them off good and lo and behold, look at that, it works perfect now. Unbelievable. So glad I didn't buy the switch. I'm glad I tried to clean those contacts first. So definitely clean the contacts first before you end up purchasing, purchasing any new switches. And then obviously if that still doesn't work, then you know your switch is bad, but make sure you do that. So if this video was helpful, guys, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.